Hey, it's John at Tinderbox Arts. In this video, I'm gonna to try to answer the question, is it possible to push start or bump start a fuel injected motorcycle? Now, in this case, we're talking about the Triumph, and this is a Triumph Bonneville 2010 model, so it's one of the first years that had the fuel injection. And what I'm gonna talk about here really applies to all the Triumphs, so if you have any of the modern classics, and really some of the other ones too, uh, whether it's a Tiger or a Trident, whatever it is, um, what I'm gonna talk about here applies. Now to cut to the chase, the answer is yes, you can push start or bump start these. And I'm going to do a demonstration shortly. But I just want to get on the same page with you about a few things here. There are differences between a carbureted bike and a fuel injected bike as far as push starting. So when we talk about push starting or bump starting, what we're talking about is a method of starting the motorcycle without the use of the starter system itself. So what we do is we turn the key on so we have power to the ignition, all right? And then we get a rolling start. Now, it might be down a hill. It might be with a friend pushing you or friends pushing you. But either way, you get the bike rolling. And once you get the ro bike rolling, we're going to have the bike in gear. We'll talk about that some more. And then the clutch is going to be in. So we set up a situation here where the ignition is ready to go. There's fuel, I'll talk about that some more in a second, in the carburetor or fuel injection system. And then once we get rolling, we're gonna let the clutch out. And by doing so, the rear wheel will drive the engine enough to turn over uh, the engine and get that air and fuel mixture into the chambers. Since the spark or ignition is already ready to go, that's gonna be able to fire the engine up. So it works on a carburetor bike for sure. There is one thing about a carburetor bike that's a little bit different though. So on a fuel injected bike, typically you have the uh, fuel pump providing pressure to the fuel injectors. That requires enough battery juice in order to get that pump going. On an older carbureted bike, you didn't need that fuel pump because it had gravity feed to the carburetor. However, you needed a fair amount of air and fuel mixture going into the chamber before it would start. So as a result, you had to get a pretty good rolling start uh, in order to, to drive the engine enough to draw air into the carburetor, enough to draw fuel into the, car into the carburetor and into the chambers. For a fuel-injected bike, you need a fuel pump under some pressure here. So you need enough battery power in order to get that fuel pump spinning up. All right, so let's get to the nitty-gritty here. This is a fuel-injected bike. First thing we want to make sure is we have enough battery power to run that fuel pump. And if there's enough battery power to run the fuel pump, there's also enough battery power to run the ignition. So once you've confirmed those two things, you should be able to bump start this. Now I want to get a microphone up close to the fuel pump and I'll turn this bike on just in case you don't know what, it hear, what it sounds like. Uh, let me give you an example. All right, put the microphone up close there. Hopefully you heard that hum. So basically, when you turn that key on, you wanna hear that humming sound, and it'll go for, I don't know, maybe 10 seconds or so in that range, and then stop. That means the fuel pump has spun up, it's created enough pressure, and you should have enough fuel uh, to get going here. All right, let's talk about gearing and the clutch. So in a recent forum exchange, I was talking to some guys here about this subject, and you know, I typically, when I'm doing a bump start here, I'll put it in first gear, and some others prefer second gear. So out of curiosity, I did do some testing, and in the demonstration, I'll show you both ways. On a smaller bike like this, I didn't notice any difference. In other words, first gear worked as well as second gear. Um, the concern would be if you have, probably with a larger engine, um, when you have it in first gear, it might be too much uh, for the traction. So when you start to let the clutch out, you may get the rear wheel sliding. There's just not enough traction. So with second gear, you know, the gearing is, is uh, more conducive um, to traction in that sense. So whether you use first or second is something you can try, but I tried it both ways on this particular bike and both ways worked. But for a larger bike, you probably want to choose second gear. Now the clutch, as you start to roll, you're going to have it in gear and the clutch is gonna be held in, okay? One thing I wanna mention is that you don't need to violently snap the clutch in order to start the engine. So when I let it loose, it's gonna be like that. 
but not, you don't have to snap it, okay? And also you probably don't want to let it out slowly because if you do, you're just going to bleed off energy and it won't be enough to turn the engine over. So something in between those two extremes. So it doesn't have to snap, doesn't have to let out slow, just something in between and that should be enough. All right, with all that said, let me show you some examples here. I just did this in my driveway and um, there's a slight slope. I didn't have a helper to push me. So there's a slight slope to my driveway and really not that much, honestly. And at the end of that slope is when I let out the clutch. So that was the examples rolling downhill. Now, if you have helpers to push you, that can actually be a little bit easier because they can get a fair amount of speed. You know, if you're running alongside a motorcycle, you're probably, I don't know, eight or 10 miles an hour. Um, and they can continue to push as you try to let out the clutch. And that'll give you a little extra oomph uh, to get this thing rolling. But you can do it either way. So to do this, the key is on, in the on position. Uh, make sure you don't do anything stupid like have the kill switch on or something. Uh, and then you're going to put it in gear, first or second gear, maybe second if you want to be sure about it. Let out the clutch fairly uh, quickly, but not snapping the clutch at the end of maybe an 8 or 10 mile an hour run. And that should be enough to turn the engine over. And then the one last thing I want to mention is once you hear that engine starting to roar, uh, you're going to pull the clutch back in. And I do that just to give the engine a chance to kind of spin up, give it some throttle, and then once it's running, you can let the clutch back out. So that's how you do it.